flight to mission complete. Finish it. Grandpa Newbie reporting for duty. It's time to do another bare bones test. This time it'll be the striker. I notice I get gacked a lot by it, but nobody carries it bare bones. So, as you can see, this one's configured. Compared this configuration to the bare bones and the statistics that you're about to see. So, I did take the bare bones factory settings, the way it comes out of the box, onto the field of honor. And let's see how it did for Grandpa and what it did to Grandpa's friendly, sometimes, enemies. Before we get into our first engagement, let's take a look at some numbers. Red is bad for the bare bones. Highlighted red is something to take note of. The configuration I provided earlier gives us a 211 meters per second faster bullet velocity. That was unintentional with the configuration. Really, it's the ranges that I was targeting because 10.9 meters is not very far for an SMG. Minimum damage range is basically okay, but uh, I needed to spoof up, spiff up, spruce up the effective or damage range. Let's take a look at recoil and performance. I thought recoil was pretty iffy for the bare bone striker, so I spruced that up too with the configuration at the cost of hip fire, which hip fire is going to be good. It's going to be fine no matter what. The performance, though, aim downside, I was willing to give up some of that, some of the reload quickness maybe, but it's exactly the same. Some of the movement speed, very little sprint speed, tactical sprint speed, but I did get some more ADS movement speed out of the bare bones than I did out of the configured. So it's a little faster overall, except for the ADS movement speed, which is a, a minor negative. And you know that I configure for range, ADS movement speed, ADS speed, and sprint to fire speed. So that configuration took care of pretty much all of those. So we dropped into free-for-all to start with, and off we go. I wasn't expecting much on this. Ooh, I think there's somebody with a sniper camping up in the over the garage there. I really didn't expect much on this map because the engagements were longer, so I needed to figure out a way to get the engagements closer in. And this area here is usually high traffic. I hit somebody's mine or something there. So I kept going back to this area here to try to keep the engagements tight. Although the bullet vo velocity is okay, the rate of fire is a little low. And I knew I needed to keep it high bare bones because the damage is 46 to the head. So if you could get a shot into the head or two, especially if somebody's already wounded, then it's going to cut down that time. And that guy just absolutely finessed me. So I'm starting to get behind very, very quickly. You can see I get gacked, I get gacked, I get gacked. I'm six kills behind. That was a little more than 10 meters probably, and it seemed to work fine, but I, I got the shots up high. Pulling out every trick in the book, you know, old age and cunning will outdo youth and vigor. I expected to see somebody there, and we actually got a long shot, but the guy was already wounded. So that's one thing to take into consideration. I know I've said that before in times to kill. Don't choose a weapon just based only on time to kill, because more often than you know, you'll probably end up with an enemy. See, there's headshot with an enemy that's already wounded especially in 6v6. Now, not every time, but a lot of times. So get the weapon that's best for you in terms of damage, the map, your play style. Got back within five, putting me in fifth place, which is not all that great. Somebody must have stepped on my proximity mine. <laughs> Surprise. Surprise for me there. So I've put out the, the mosquito drone. I'm going to lace that high traffic area. Always could, good to kill the king. And you see, I found myself at this point, this guy named Coldwater was really gacking. I was 10 behind. 
but I did get him with a proximity mine. So I'm going to continue to go back into the fight, although I had second thoughts here because there were just too many people there. Get my situational awareness up. Don't see anybody, don't hear anybody. Of course, everybody uses covert sneakers now. That's pretty much a crutch. It's just grandpa's crutch. Whoa. And a couple laughter stepped on my mind, got us both. A little bit of strafe there, although the strafe speed on the bare bones is pretty low. I mean, it's less than some snipers, let's put it that way. Well, actually not snipers, but less than some marksman rifles. Got to keep it real, Grandpa. So I'm following some, where somebody stepped in paint. That is Elvis the King, otherwise known as Cold Water. And I used almost every, 30 rounds to overcompensate for my aim there and also the distance. So I'm five behind past 20. I'm not really feeling like we're going to do too good here. It, it just feels like, especially at distance, bare bones doesn't get you what you're looking for. But we endeavored to persevere. Famous quote from the outlaw Josie Wells. I'll try to think of a different quote from that movie because I know you're probably tired of hearing this one. How about this? Dying ain't no way to make a living, boy. There's that guy with his with his mind out there. So actually, we're closing the distance. We got a bloodthirsty, which always helps. You know, I tell you in free for all, you can change the whole complexion of the game in a matter of 30 seconds. You can go from five ahead to five behind, or five behind to almost equal, and we're almost tied there. So Crambaugh's down by two with a mosquito drone. He's following the paint. And there he is. Oh, but somebody gacked him. Can't see who gacked him, but somebody did step on a mine. Grandpa's out of there. He wants to put out the drone. Good morning, Starshine. The Earth says hello. Sometimes doors just don't open for me. You gotta open your own doors. Now it's starting to get tight. Grandpa can feel the end game coming. Quite fortunate there to get Elvis, get one ahead, and then somebody jumps. Give him some love taps with the Renetti. And it's a Snickers victory for Grandpa. Oh, yeah. I didn't quite just feel the love for the striker and the bare bones configuration there. I was already calculating what attachments I would put on it to make it to make it uh, more usable for me. So here's the second game. We're going to Tokyo, my friends. I've only been through the airport in Arita many times. I think I'll jump off the map. <laughs> Trying to figure out how to get up there. You know, give me a break. It's hard for me to jump. Shooting at ghosts. Nothing in the window, so we're going to pop down. We don't stay in one place too long. And I think somebody stepped on the mind. Mind? Mind? The mine, a proximity mine, the bouncing Betty. So we'll put another one right there. And we'll go out in search of ancient astronauts and enemies. Oh, somebody's shooting at me. That's dangerous. Can't go through those doors. So I could see that this one was developing fairly slowly. So I, I didn't get... Anxious to get too many gacks too soon, and we just luck into a double kill there. Or somebody's trying to eliminate me, sell me the farm, but I'm not buying. 
Now, Mosquito Drone is good on this map unless everybody's camping inside, like at the pinball machine or the Tokyo Hotel, where you just get a little cubicle, coffin-sized cubicle. There they are. You know, when you get a bloodthirsty and you don't get a good lead on somebody, or you know that this is going to be a competitive game. So the, the striker, I'm trying to keep everything close because you've got to play to the strengths of the weapon. And the bare bones, 10.9 meters, 11 meters. Guy decided to take a nap at a strange time. Whoa, he did too. These guys think they're Superman. Okay, so Grandpa gets up by six, but uh, it's not going to last. Actually, uh, I get up by seven, and things turn on me fairly quickly. Whoa. So the guy had me in his sights. On this map, somebody, as I recall, was camping at a very strategic location, and he got a lot of kills in a hurry. In fact, he got Grandpa once. Now, I don't have any complaints about really movement with the striker, bare bones. Yep. See, the bouncing Betty servers are early warning devices. Man, that guy just turned on me. And the thing about it is, is that it was beyond that 10.9 meters. It was probably about a 20 meter shot there. And I just got evaporated. And I felt bare bones, you need configuration. You need it needs some help, so I did increase the ranges with the uh, with the configuration. I didn't even see that guy standing there. I think he was watching TV or something. So I got the feeling that there weren't people camping up high in this. Whoa! There's Superman, the white furry Tribble there. Back through the Tokyo Hotel, somebody coming after me. And the guy that just threw the the guy that just threw the missile there is the one that I think was camping up here like forever. And he even got me one time coming up the stairs. But once you know he's there, once you know where a camper is, they're dead the next time. Uh-oh, bad time to change magazines because it takes three seconds. And now I went from six or seven ahead to one behind. I just couldn't find anybody. There he is right there. So you know where Grandpa's going. Once he decides he's going to stay on the map, he's going after him. You cannot allow somebody who camps to ever feel not hunted. So now it's neck and neck. And I'm not going to stay there because I know this guy is going to come back up and shoot me in the ear. Whoa, get on down. Can't uh, criticize anybody for putting out Betty's, can I? There's the white furry Tribble. He likes a lot of movement, and that's the thing about advanced movement. Sometimes it does nothing more than get you killed. Sometimes it's better just to be standing up straight or just crouched over for a second. And you get an accurate shot. That guy had so many advanced movement techniques that I thought I was at an Olympic gymnastics competition. Whoa, there's somebody. Hopefully he gets gacked. Yep, the guy that gacked him's coming around. And that kind of shot at distance is fine with the Holger. 
hold your with a striker. As long as God doesn't see you, because if he sees you, you're gone. I generally like SMGs. Where is that guy? He's laying down, and he got me. He finessed me. The voice of who? F Souls. Whatever that is. There's White Furry Tribble. I think he's taking a beating there. Nope, he's still alive for a second. So we're tied at 27. So Grandpa did not have any easy games. These two games I played were not, were not easy. There's Furry Tribble. And I'm down by one. I've got to get two before this guy gets one. There's one. And there's Furry Tribble. He's going to play the part for me. So overall, I think we need configuration. The mission is complete. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. It helps me, helps the family. Let's see Furry Tribble taking it one more time. Cheers to you and peace. Oh, by the way, there's an extra game after the F4 pops its shoot. Hard point. Control the target area. Hard point located. Lock it down. Flash out.
Good work. 